So in this example, we're given uh, a definition for a current density, which is here. And you can see that it is defined uh, in the unit vector y direction. And what they've asked us to do is, from the consideration of uniqueness uh, of the magnemotive force, they want us to find the displacement current emanating from a cubical box defined by these planes here. And so if we uh, draw out the planes that they've given, this is the diagram uh, that we end up with. And so when we look at this, the first thing we notice, or one thing that we should notice, is since we're only defined in the unit vector y direction, um, that limits you know, the directions of current flow. So what that means for us then is as we look at this diagram, um, if we start with the surface vector direction defined uh, in DS1, you can see that it is perpendicular to Y, so therefore that dot product would be zero. Uh, same thing with this vector here, zero. And actually all four of these are all gonna be zero because of their direction. They're not in the Y direction. So we shouldn't see any current density flow in that in those areas. So the one that we, one of the ones that we might see is in this direction, it's in the negative Y direction. But when we look at our current density definition right here, there's this Y term. And in this plane right here, uh, this is at the y equals zero plane. So that being the case, there would be no current flow in that plane either. So it's going to end up being uh, a zero as well. <clears throat> so finally, uh, that leaves just this ds6 direction that we should have any type of non-zero current density. So we need to need to note that so let's do that so our current density is going to be by definition equal to zero for the s1 s2 s3 s4 and s5 planes okay so then that being the case you know we're going to consider this contour here then closed contour, and we're going to look at Ampere's law. And so Ampere's law then tells us that the integral around some contour or the magnetic field intensity around uh, some line integral, a vector line integral defined there, is going to be equal to the current density minus the uh, time derivative of the integral over some surface of the current displacement over some surface here. So <clears throat> we've already noted that for one through five, current density is equal to zero. And so then that will be uh, paired with the um, surface, the, the current density over the surfaces, the, the time derivative of that. So let me fix that. So the time derivative of all these integrals, uh, we'll say S1 through S5 of the current density dotted with ds1 through ds5. We should actually write probably all these integrals out, but just for, for time's sake, uh, we'll summon those up. And then um, these should be equal to uh, what's going on in surface 6. And so what we have going on there, there y is equal to 1. So our j term then would just be cosine omega t, 
and that's going to be plus the time derivative of the integral over s6 d dot ds6 so if we uh, use this equation we can move uh, this over with this summation and so that just gives us the general uh, definition of the current density over all surfaces and again that's the time derivative and so that what we're left with then is uh, this negative cosine omega t so this is what we've calculated then to be uh, an expression for the current density emanating from this surface and this should make sense right so if we're going to conserve energy you know if we have a current flow out of the uh, out of the box that's defined as this the only other energy that would be coming in that would offset that would be the current density uh, around the box. So, so this is our final answer.